extraordinarily important that you understand, and this is a pivot point for me, and it, it, it came, it started in November, and I shared this letter to my children uh, on GBTV, I think it was December 14th or 15th. It was the last show that I did, I believe, from New York. And I took the last 10 minutes of the show and I said, here's why I'm leaving. And I read part of the letter to my children on that episode. Can you see if GBTV or Glenbeck.com can get that? Sure, we can uh, look for it, yeah. Yeah, and grab that and put that on the front page. But I, I shared that um, moment. And in that letter, I said, look, I think things are changing. And I remember standing the week of Thanksgiving, I remember standing in my um, apartment in New York, looking out in the city. And all I could, I was overwhelmed by how much despair is coming in that city. And I, I couldn't even, it was beautiful. I have this apartment in New York um, that has this beautiful view. And it's just, it's a dream apartment. And I couldn't that week look out those windows and see anything but despair. Pat and I that week walked up the Fifth Avenue. And remember how packed it was? Mm -hmm. And everybody had packages and everything else that they were buying. And Pat and I walked up the street and we just wanted to grab people and say, do you have the money to pay for these things? Please tell me you didn't put this on credit card. What is wrong with you? Don't you know what's coming? And it was just, it was, it's just an odd feeling. And I've been saying to you, um, I think, um, from time to time since then, that something has changed. I don't know exactly what it is, but something is coming. I don't know when. I believe that I, I have figured out um, the uh, mechanics of it. It came to me last week on the, um, you know, right before one of the radio shows and it was based in Stuart Chase's book from 1942 uh, and that new documentary that is um, about Barack Obama the documentary is called The Road We've Traveled the Stuart Chase book it, critical to the progressive movement is called The Road We're Traveling so you know this is not um, just some stupid book that nobody knows about this book, try to buy a first edition Stuart Chase book, The Road We're Traveling, and it's about $350. To put that into context, to buy a Booker T. Washington book, Up From Slavery, is $350. This is not a know-nothing, not-important book. It's the guy who coined the term The New Deal. And he said that there would come a time when we would have all these things in place, and he said in the book, call it Communism, call it fascism or state capitalism. We'll name it later. But once we have these things in place, it will be too late to turn the ship. This is why Barack Obama doesn't care anymore. They're operating on that premise that they can get enough done in his first term that it doesn't matter. The ship won't turn back around. You've destroyed America. That's the operation. That's the premise I think that they're operating under right now doesn't matter if Mitt Romney gets in or Barack Obama gets in. They're going to cause so much chaos that the top is coming down. So phase one, I believe, is completed. Phase one is um, the transformative control, meaning become the man. Get the systems into place. Bring the current structure into near crisis. You can't be the one that does the crisis. You have to be the one that is there as the man solving the crisis. Create the crisis. Bring it to near crisis. Let somebody else take the blame for it. And I'll accept, that's phase two. And I'll explain that um, uh, later on and, and tonight on GBTV. They have to weaken your faith, your family, your community. Confuse the difference between right and wrong. Emphasize rights and wealth. It's my stuff. I want that stuff and organize the top layer of control, infiltrate the government, labor, business, the military, the mainstream media, banking. They've done all of it. That's phase one. It's over. The progressive era is over. Remember, that's not an ideology. That is a tactic. The idea is they wanted revolution, but they didn't want blood in the streets. So the progressive era is over. 
Now it's time for the inside out part, and that's phase two, and that's what we're going to concentrate on television tonight on GBTV. But I want to play, how long is the Paul Harvey thing? A couple of minutes. Okay, then we have time here. Let's play Paul Harvey. I want to play something. If you don't think that they have accomplished their goals, I want to play something from 1962, radio commentator uh, Paul Harvey, who was absolutely, I met the man, I, I knew the man, he was absolutely inspired of God. I want you to hear a, a recording of what Paul Harvey said in 1962. The quality is kind of bad. 65. Uh, 65. Listen to what he said. If he were Satan, how he would destroy us, what he would work on. Most of these things weren't even in the hopper in 1965. Listen to the prophetic words of radio commentator Paul Harvey. If I were the devil, I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree. The. So I set about however necessary to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who want it until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what will you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public. And I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. Paul Harvey. Good day. That is incredible. I, I would lure you into bed and give you diseases to which there are no cures. That wasn't the case in 1965. 1965. We had no idea about AIDS. I mean... And, and the, the other sexually transmitted diseases could be cured. It's, that's an amazing... It's really um, remarkable, all of the things that um, he said, how accurate he was in 1965. When you listen to that now, you say, those are our problems. Those are the problems of our society. Those are the ills. Now I go back to... Phase one, transform the nation, weaken it, weaken it enough, bring it near crisis. If you listen to what he just said, that's phase one. It's been done. You have to then, if I were Satan, if I were the devil, I would have a system that you could fall into. Remember, just like the devil, he wants your soul forever. He wants you in misery forever. 
I need a system that you'll fall into. And I'm going to have you end up begging me for that system. What you would never, ever ask for today, I'm going to make it your idea. If I'm the devil, I make you beg me for it. Please help me. Oh, okay. If that's really what you want, I will. Phase two tonight, GBTV. Don't miss it.